Welcome back to another Swords and Magic and Stuff devlog. Today we're going to be doing a Q&A with the whole dev team. So we're all here right now live to answer all your burning questions. Um, who's here? Who do we have here? I have Jana with me. Hi. Uh, Jana's my wife. She's the community manager and she handles a lot of marketing and stuff behind the scenes. And a ton of other random stuff that no one sees. And then we have Wendy. Hey. Wendy's level designer and she handles all kinds of level design stuff and texture and some other marketing stuff. And then we and have quests. and quests. Sorry. And quests. And then we have Joe. Hi, Joe. Hello. I'm going to let Joe introduce himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joe. I'm the animator and AI programmer and kind of general, kind of generalist as well with like the programming stuff. I help out in a bunch of different areas. And then we have, what is in here? <laughs> Drum roll, please, our new programmer. We have the new lead programmer who just came on when? Like a month and a half end, ago? The end of May. The end of May. Lewis. Hi, Lewis. It's me. Hi. I'm uh, the newest team member, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and as already mentioned, I'm in charge of programming. Not with us today is Edie, who does quest design, and Soupy, who does a lot of icons and outfit design. Texture work, fun stuff. Yeah, that stuff. All right, so let's get into the Q&A. So we've had multiple questions about armor and armor slots and all kinds of different stuff like that. So first one is why is the team against adding armor? We're not. Or slash, what are the plans for armor outfits that are not cosmetic? You guys want me to take this one? Okay, good, I will. Okay, so we're not against adding armor. Um, what we're against is players choosing a certain look for their character based on stats. Uh, we just really like the idea that players can look however they want to look, and uh, they shouldn't be using stats to weigh in on that. So what we plan on doing is adding some sort of socketing system where like you can craft runes of some sort and attach them to your armor or your clothing or your hat or whatever you want um, in order to give your player a little more or your character a little more of a stat advantage um without having to sacrifice your visual look so um in the future we'll be adding this in i don't know when yet we don't really have plans for that but uh it will be coming awesome uh another question about our armor and weapon uh will armors and weapons have stats that boost character stats or change the way combat plays so i guess with the the whole armor and aesthetics versus functionality discussion that's like something that we've had in mind or well, you've had in mind from from the very start mm -hmm. um anyone can do and wear and use whatever they want uh, but you're also really interested in that kind of uh play style especially with the co-op multiplayer aspect where there's different roles in like the the online multiplayer combat experience i guess so um that's definitely something where where armor comes into play so we are actually going to be adding in a basically we're, we're going to be kind of overhauling some of the weapon stuff and we'll be adding in stats on weapon drops so when a weapon is dropped or crafted um you'll be like every weapon will have a stat attached to it um, we won't do this with armor i don't think but probably with definitely with weapons so you might have a weapon that drops from a, a, some monster somewhere uh, that gives like plus three focus and like plus one regeneration or something. And those will just be like permanent stats on your character at all times, um, as long as you have that weapon equipped and in your hand. Um, and then the, we might actually have rare stats as well to have a, a small chance of dropping. And those stats will probably be randomized as well. So give you more reason to like grind for better gear if you want. Um, and then that'll also crafting will also come into play with that as well. Uh, how has your experience been so far going from solo project to a larger team? I think this one's for Wendy. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so when I started this project, it was just a fun little, like, 
I'm gonna see if I can make a little tiny open world game with my very limited knowledge in Unreal and my very limited knowledge with 3D modeling and animation and rigging and all that. And, Just a um, little tiny, tiny open world game. <laughs> yeah. And it slowly grew and it got to the point where I just couldn't do it by myself anymore. So um, I think like there's definitely some benefits to working solo. Like you have full control over everything. And if you don't like something, you just change it. You don't have to ask anyone. Um, and it's like it, as a team, if I want to change something, I have to basically go through everyone to make sure that that's not going to break anything that they had plans for or they're doing. If I want to change how like quests are given out or something like that could break everything that Didi has done or uh, everything that, that Wendy's been working on. So um, working in a team is totally different. It's just a different dynamic. But honestly, I love working in a team. It's just you can feed off of each other when one person is hyped about something and they just talk about it, then everyone else starts get, like feeding off that energy and they start getting hyped. And pretty soon we, you know, add a whole new, you know, plane of existence to the game before we even <laughs> know it. Um, so Whoops. yeah, it's it's great. It's 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 been wonderful. <laughs> Next. What do you think the future brings for Kindred Greens as a studio? Well, I think that when this game is finished or very close to finished, we will be probably brainstorming some new ideas for something more or something new. Um, yeah, I, I like the idea of just coming back and updating Swords and Magic as long as people are still playing it. But I think that we all have lots of ideas for other fun like games and projects we want to do. And I would really love to just kind of group up and figure out what we really what we all really, really want to make next. And depending on how successful Swords of Magic is, um, that will kind of determine how big that next project is, I guess. Awesome. OK, this is a question for the whole team. What are you guys most proud of so far with the development? So everyone talk at once. I am most proud of the community, which sounds weird. But I'm just, I'm really proud that we were able to make something that brought people together and we created friendships and relationships. And it's just been really incredible seeing so many people changed and like just like touched by Swords of Magic. And I just, I don't know, I think that's really incredible to me. It's just kind of crazy to, to think that so much has come from just this dumb idea that I had one day. So that's what I'm most proud of, is just like building this community and seeing it all come to life. Yeah, yeah really that makes a lot of sense to me. Over a game. And especially uh, earlier, you were talking about like going from a solo project to a larger team. And it's been really, um, really cool to kind of watch that, that team grow, not just like you to us, but like the community as well, growing alongside that. Yeah. It's Joe, special. Joe, what are you most proud of? Yeah, I'm definitely, um, and I guess in a similar vein, kind of most proud of just our growth as a team. Um, we, we, there's been a few bumps along the way, but I think we, we were, we're getting to a place where we work really well together. Um, I think all of our like skill sets complement each other really well. And yeah. it's just, it's really great working together. Agreed. I agree. Wendy? Oh gosh, this is kind of a cop out, but um, just how far the game has come as a whole. I mean, I remember when uh, we didn't have multiplayer and that got added in, then we didn't have any kind of map, we didn't have any kind of tutorial, we didn't have any way to lock a chest, we didn't have any way to track a quest, and like, here we are farming, crafting, moving NPCs. Uh, I'm just really proud of where the game has come to now, you know? Yeah, it's come a long way. All right, Lewis, what about no, you? Uh, uh, I was literally just going to make a joke and say uh, the, the pun that I put in with the stable. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm most proud of. That's hilarious. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, next question. Do you plan on adding any vehicle types other than mounts, such as carriages or airships? If so, how would you have them work? Will the boats be drivable or just teleport you to the other ports? Oh man, this is a cool question. So thank you, Cameron, cool for this question. So Lewis, when we were working on the the new ferry that just went in, um, he was talking about how excited he was to get it working and how he wants to do more things like that. So we were 
we were maybe brainstorming about more methods of transportation um, like further into the mainland. And one of those ideas was a carriage system where you could you could pay and jump on a carriage and then it would take you wherever you want to go. Um, so that's one possibility. Another one is, I don't know if I want to spoil it, but I have some ideas for like mount like things that aren't alive. Um, think tinkerers, think magic, stuff like that. Um, there probably won't, any, won't ever be any like flying stuff unless it's like a like we could do like a like sort of like a ferry, but like an airship. That would be kind of cool. Uh, unfortunately, it's really hard in an open world game to let players fly because of loading issues. So you'd, you'd end up seeing a bunch of stuff being unloaded and loaded. Um, so if we can ever like tackle that issue, then maybe and we already we already see pretty far in the game. So maybe it's yeah. actually maybe it is possible. But those are my plans for it anyway. Yeah. Okay. So Cameron's question, uh, I just wanted to clarify how they ask about boats. Uh, so boats won't be drivable at this stage. Uh, but they also don't just teleport you. Um, so the the ferry in game at the moment is um, it runs on a schedule. So it's kind of true to life for an open world game. It's uh, it's running whether you're there or not. Uh, and if you show up at the right time, you hear the ferry bell in the distance. Run over, jump on the ferry, uh, and then you can catch a ride to uh, to wherever you're going. It's very immersive. So we just I know I love it. We just have the one ferry in the game at the moment, but it's definitely got like our uh, cogs turning in terms of other thoughts. Uh, I would love to put a little merchant ship um, just kind of floating around near the island, maybe doing its own thing. Maybe you see it, maybe you don't. It depends if you're at the right place in the right time. Um, and like Kindred said earlier, we have that now that we have that system, we can use that for carriages, horse and cart kind of thing. Um, we can also use it for more like puzzle type uh, interactions like uh, a platform and a pulley system um, which could be really interesting in multiplayer if one one player has to operate the the pulley and the other player gets pushed up and down okay so this next question comes from angel do you get those days when you just don't want to do any work on the game or anything at all but you know you must how do you deal with those days so I'll answer since no one else wants to, that's fine. Um. <laughs> I got an answer for this one. It's, uh, it's actually super easy for me because uh, no, I don't get those days yet. I haven't been on the project yet. long enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like, I'm still just super excited. Uh, every single day I'm like, yeah. excellent time to work on Swords and Magic all day. <laughs> this is yeah. great. This is amazing. Yeah, so I definitely get those days. Um, not in a while though. Um, typically I have a rule where I if it's a work day, I have to put at least like 15 minutes or half an hour or whatever. I have to put some time working on something. And typically, if I'm really not in the mood, I'll get that done and I'll just go on to doing something else for the day. Um, but, you know, it's nice being indie, too, because we wear a lot of hats. And so some days I might just really not want to be doing any modeling. It's just not something I feel like doing that day. And so I'll just go do something else or work on something new that's, that's going to be coming in or whatever. And also our game is really amazing because there's so many different features and so many different things going on that there's always something exciting to do so, or to work on. So um, but when I do have those days where I just don't feel like working at all, it's I usually just put my 15 minutes in and then I take a break for a while if I have to. Um, but yeah, I mean, like burnout's a real thing and everyone experiences it. And that's why I think a lot of games don't get finished. And I think you really have to see the forest for the trees and you have to really understand that what you're doing is a bigger deal than it seems like it is at the time. And I guess it depends on the game and the project. But for Swords of Magic, we have a lot of fans who are really in love with this game. And I guess at the end of the day, I just kind of look at that and I think about how exciting it's going to be watching them experience whatever I'm working on no matter how tedious it is for me. And so it's worth doing. Anyone else want to add? I really like your uh, 15 minute rule. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like 15 minutes is like really easy to rationalize. That's like a, a really easy amount of work, like 15 minutes out of a day. Like, how can you not, right? But then yeah. once you put 15 minutes in, you'll uh, have an idea of like, oh, maybe I can do this. Or like, you know, today's a write-off. Yep, need to take a, a day. Yeah, more times than not, it turns into like, you know, a couple hours. hours. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. I was just gonna. I was just gonna uh, like agree that yeah, like it's, sometimes it's kind of like a train. It just takes a little while to get the momentum going for the day, but then you get chugging along. Yep. Um, but I've definitely had days. Um, and again, I think like um, 
Kindred not recently, I think very recent, like like recently, especially um, with like our new like, newer like team dynamic and stuff, I've really been into it, but like there were definitely like, um, it's like some times where I was just like, especially with my other job, like used to be a lot more stacked on me. It was just, it was really rough to like get everything I needed to get done in a day. But um, yeah, definitely. just gotta, you gotta buckle up and uh, get to it. <laughs> yep. I think for me, um, it's more, I'm a list person. So if I have a list of things I need to do and I'm staring at this list every day, I like crossing it off. So if I know I still have things on my list, I'll tell myself, maybe not the 15 minute thing, but I'll be like, okay, I'll, I'll knock out one or two of these. And after I cross off one, I'm like, oh, I could just get this one done. And then I just keep going because I have a list and it's not like a daunting task of I have a hundred things to do. It's more, oh, there's five things on my list to do today. And there's five things on the list that need to be done by the end of the week. So I'm, I'm a very visual lister. Is that a, is that a thing? <laughs> sure. It's a thing now. So <laughs> what I call it. I don't I, know. It definitely is. I'm really into lists as well. Um, the only other thing I do with lists is uh, if I if I can't get the first thing on the list done, I break it down into smaller things. And if that doesn't work, I break those down into smaller things until eventually like the first thing on the list is just like, get up. Um, <laughs> and if that's not working, it's just like open your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think kind of breaking your, your work down into more bite-sized pieces. If you look at the game and you're like, I have to finish this whole game, it's obviously it's a huge daunting task and it's just so much work that it seems impossible, but yeah, when you break it down and you're like, oh, all I have to do is put this one tree in this level right now, then that's, you know, that's so much easier. And then you go from there. Yeah. I have to mention, I can't believe Joe did not say Michael. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we were like I, staring I at each do, other in shock. <laughs> I had to, I had to pause and be like, well, people aren't used to this. People on YouTube are, because my YouTube Yeah, that's is... true, people on YouTube that's are. That's true, that's true. Yeah, so you can call me whatever you want right Joe's now. like, what do I say, what do I say? Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's next? Okay, um, what do you decide the order of what needs to be worked on slash added, and how do you deal with times when you really want to work on A, but B needs doing more? Hmm. That's where my lists come in handy, I feel. Um, like, I know what needs to be worked and added, but it's kind of also, Time. like how long do things take if something takes five minutes and I really want to do it but it's not the most important thing it takes five minutes we can get it off the list then we can spend more time on that other thing and not keep that off to the end but there's a lot of things that take equal amount of time so it's prioritizing yeah I think there's a lot of time and effort spent prioritizing uh, more than more than people outside of games would would realize um, I know you guys put a lot of thought into the roadmap Mm -hmm. So that's that's a start. That's uh, <laughs> just kind of threw some things on the roadmap. It's whatever. <laughs> well, we're gonna be redoing the roadmap <laughs> next week. For like so. the yeah, fifth time. Exactly right. That's more like that's more labor, uh, but it's also really important labor. Putting things into like uh, having a, a clear priority list. But the roadmap yeah. is like super zoomed out, right? Uh, when you wake up in the morning, deciding what to work on first. Um, there needs to be thought process behind that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of time and effort spent prioritizing. Uh, and at the, the zoomed in level, uh, a lot of it is just like, okay, what needs to be done for other people on the team? Uh, what programming needs to be done before the quest writers can then take that and, and build a quest around that? Um, what animating needs to be done before it, the, the new enemy or, or character can be, can be programmed? Um, yeah, all of that stuff. Yep. For me, I also love watching people play the game. So YouTubers and streamers, um, or just our testers when I can. Um, and watching them play sometimes will give me will make me realize like what's actually important. If the same person keeps coming across the same bug, maybe it's time to actually like push shut up on the priority list and fix it, you know? So I think it just depends on, on what it is, but I think everyone pretty sum pretty much summed that up pretty well. Yeah. Um, I like the part of the question, uh, how do you deal with times when you really want to work on A, but B needs doing more? Um, sometimes I just work on A. Yep, <laughs> sometimes that's <laughs> what you gotta do. You gotta capitalize on that, uh, on that momentum. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you're, if, unless you're like, you know, hours away from getting like a build out, in which case you've already failed because you shouldn't be that close to a deadline without things finished. Um, sometimes it's just 
it, it doesn't matter that much, you know? Work on B. Or work on A, I mean, if, if you feel like it. Just yeah. get, some, just get work done. Yeah, and sometimes it's either like, you're gonna be, you're either working on the, the quote, important thing, or like, you're just not gonna be like working at all. Like you're just done with that for the, you know? You're just like, so it, um, at that point, it's just, why not just work on the thing you wanna work on? Like Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, would you rather get some work down on something that is fun to work on or no work done at all, you know, so. True. Work is always better than no work. Next. All right. When will the dungeon thing in the lava cave be available? <laughs> um, at some point. <laughs> that's exactly when. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. some point that's, in the future the when dungeons come out. It's all about prioritizing. Yeah, that is actually a dungeon. There's a whole dungeon lock behind that, and it will open up once it is ready. It is, I mean, to be transparent, it's mostly like level designed out. It mm -hmm. definitely needs some more love now that we have some more features in the game, but it's um, level design is pretty much done in it. It needs a lot of AI work and it needs some other stuff, but we have a lot of other things we need to do first before dungeons are ready, but they're definitely on the list and they're, they're coming. For sure. We should we should get some visuals on the screen if we don't already. Yeah, here I'll put some visuals up. What are you doing? <laughs> um, dungeons are on the roadmap for fall, so I guess that's when you can expect that. Yeah, exactly. It's that's that's exactly when. <laughs> we'll see when we make a new roadmap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So this was a question from Twitter. How do you figure out how to split tasks between people and timelines for release? Does everybody sort of work at their own pace toward a common goal? Or are there development meetings where you discuss all the features, assets, code, and assign them somewhere in between? So I'll start with this one. Um, one of the things that I kind of am responsible for is making sure we do have the weekly meetings. Uh, so we meet once a week. We go through- At least. At least, I mean, I think everyone meets all the time, but one official meeting a week. There's many, many, many unofficial pop-ins. Um, but it's just going through what's going on for the week, what the plans are for next week, if we need to readjust timelines, um, if something happened that messed up something else that we need to push back. Like, uh, but we make sure we do always have a weekly meeting set to get towards that common goal. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say everyone just works at their own. I mean, I guess I guess everyone does work at their own pace, but um, we all have pretty we have deadlines mostly um, each week or whenever they're necessary. We're kind of kind of shifting how our deadlines work a little bit more lately. Um, well, it's more it's more because we got towards the update, so we had right. the, the set what needed to go in the update, so it was more spread out. But we do have those weekly. This needs to be done so we can be on a timeline. Yeah, and sometimes those deadlines don't make sense it's like weekly but we'll we'll change them as mm -hmm. they come up um but yeah um and like like um i think it was lewis brought up we also have a lot of times where things have to shift based on what someone else needs so we don't just you know we're like when we split up tasks it's usually because like that's that person's wheelhouse right so if, if a model needs made that's me if you know uh, an area needs like polished or like uh dressed up and that's wendy you know, um, when it comes to programming, me, Lewis, and Joe um, will kind of split up those tasks depending on what it is and who can do it at which time. Or do it all together. Right. Yeah. And there's many times where we just jump in a call and we just knock it out together because it's three minds are greater than one. So, yeah. Yeah. There's um, there's some things where it's like one of us has a, a better knowledge of that part of the code base, so it makes more sense for like, oh, I'll take this one. Um, but there's also times where I'm like, yeah, I'm at I'm at a loss. I'm gonna have to call in the three-headed hydra here. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, like that's one of my favorite things about our team dynamic, dynamic right now is that instead of the person who's best at that just handling it and being done with it, everyone learns from the, the experience. And so we all discuss it. And so when if Joe fixes something, we always ask, like, what happened? What was it? And then he explains how he did it. And then we all learn something. And the next time it comes up, we can fix it ourselves. Um, yeah, on this question, like? actually, um, Jana, I know you don't really consider yourself like the producer for the team. <laughs> but you definitely do a lot of game production work as part of your kind of like uh, role in the team. Um, so like all this, like making sure people are on top of their deadlines, helping people set their own deadlines, making sure the meetings happen. That's um, a lot of that is you. Uh, but a lot of the, um, the stuff that this question asks about is also kind of spread pretty evenly across the team. 
uh, you know, people working out their own deadlines um, and and adjusting them as required and all that. Janna, did you just did you just get a promotion? Um, maybe. <laughs> Should we change you from community probably... manager to game producer? Well, Lewis always says that I am part of the dev team, but I don't want to be yellow on Discord. So that's I the only reason. <laughs> I refuse. So, so everyone else, that's the only reason she's not in the dev team is because she doesn't want to be yellow. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm blue. I, I got to pick my color. And I have I have my own little community manager role. I don't need to be yellow. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Um, next question is also from Twitter. Uh, what was the most surprising thing that you learned you had to do during development for me early on it was probably sell the game um like market <laughs> yes. the game i oh wow what a surprise well like i mean like market the game right like like get, yeah yeah like get people to know about it like when you start making games you're just like if i can just learn how to make a good game then i can do this for a living or whatever you want to do whatever your goal is nope uh, and yeah, it's not out at all. In fact, you can make a pretty awful game. And as long as you're really good at getting people to buy it, it doesn't matter, uh, which is which is really, really surprising to me. I guess I I think most developers have that totally backward when they start making games. It's just one yeah. of those things as a developer, you just want to get in and start learning to code or learning to model or, or draw or whatever. Um, yeah. And that's like that's like half of it, you know, making yeah. the actual game you is like make half the work. You can make a really, really amazing game unlike anyone, anything anyone's ever seen before. And uh, no one will believe you because there's a lot of really good games that already come out. And people are like, you can't be making the best game. The best game of 2021 just came out and I played it and it was great. Like, it's it's yeah, sort of magic. It's wild. I think for me, because <laughs> um, I'm not really developing. You're not a developer. <laughs> Kidding. Um, I think for me, it the biggest part is like how much back work there is. There's a lot of um, like just making YouTube videos. I mean, we have Arrow that helps with that, but just trying to get everything together for all the information, the the art, the yeah, the press releases. Like, there's so much more that goes into developing a game than just actually making the game. There's the community aspect, there's the dedicated testers, there's just, there's so much more to it. And and that's kind of, it was surprising at first. And I think more stuff just keeps creeping up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, another thing I got to add to my plate. But it's stuff that's really necessary. And it's just surprising at how much there is. Mm -hmm. I am, um, I think for me, I, I essentially, you know, come from a background of static scene uh, creation and so moving into more of a creating scenes for games uh, comes with a whole load of new challenges I had never really thought about before like um, how much you can see at one time or you know how traversable is this area or is this NPC going to get stuck on this chair how many items are in this room is this too many for performance you know just little pieces here and there that really creep up on you in game design we just keep learning more yeah. about that every day yeah yeah I think that's really like yeah just the especially with like a project of this size which none of us have ever you know for those of us who have like worked in games and on games before it's mostly been like smaller projects and game jams and stuff like that and there is just like a lot that um just like in, in, in at this scale that just happens that you just would, would have never thought of before and i think for like the most surprising thing for me was just like the the steps you have to take for proper like data management in, in such like a, a large world with such a, like a large swath of like items and um enemies and like everything there's, there's so much of every every different kind of thing that has to be like managed very carefully so it's not exploding <laughs> yep i don't know this is kind of like with with one of my uh with my teaching job which i'm not doing anymore but this that would be like kind of what i teach to to the first years um so i'm i'm kind of used to trying to pop that bubble where they're like they don't really realize that games are made by people. Like they might have the idea that they are, but they don't really, it doesn't really communicate. So it's like, yes, games are made by people. And yes, when you make a game first, you have to like, you know, you, you can't just 
code the game you have to uh break it down into every you have to like make the footsteps sound play when the um the foot of the character touches the ground or maybe you don't want to do it that way maybe you just want to do it on like a half second timer and they're all like what don't do like, that yep no one do that <laughs> um but yeah i guess for a, a more appropriate answer um on the same line as joe i've worked on lots of projects before and i've done my best to to work on big projects that have a lot of uh keeping up with stuff involved but nothing like this when i came onto this project i'm like this is this is huge this game is enormous like bigger than i could have uh conceived of even having worked on projects for like more than a year in the past yeah it grew really fast too it really did yeah really. i mean it doubled in size and 500 update, plus items in this, in this update oh. yeah um i also just wanted to point out that when i first started making games I didn't realize how dumb computers were. <laughs> um, and what I mean by that is like, and I notice this a lot when I'm talking to like new developers as well. Um, they just kind of assume that things are going to just work, you know, like your footstep thing. Like people just assume that you're going to press the W key and your character is going to start animating and start moving and that you don't have to worry about that part. But that's not the case. Anything you want the game to do, you literally have to tell the computer to do it, right? You have to, you have to program that all in. And that is something that early, early on, I just couldn't fathom at all until I started doing it and even even now I guess I get it now but yeah anyway yeah okay uh next question what is simultaneously the most exciting thing and the most scary thing about kingdom showing people the game I mean oh yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> hands down that's the winner hands down right like you put all this work in you do all this effort and you're so excited because like, oh my gosh, people are going to play this game that I've been working on. And at the same time, oh my gosh, people are going to be playing this game I've been working on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I was so excited. I've been watching people stream today and I was so excited to see everyone get to the farmlands. But at the same time, I was so nervous to see everyone get to the farmlands because I know that there's probably issues, you know, and they're going to come across those. Um, but the things that are working really well, I'm so excited for them to see. And I'm so excited to watch them experience those things. So. I, I love their reactions. And they're like, oh my gosh, like this thing is in there. This, what is this? Where did you yeah. get that? Look at this outfit. Like it's just, it's just the reactions. But then it's like, oh, did that, that did that work? Did you actually yeah. get what you're supposed to? And Yeah. And we're all just sitting here like cringing because we know that what maybe the, what, what dropped wasn't actually supposed to drop. And they're like, oh, this is so cool. And we're like, oh, that's a bug. But... <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely it. All right. Do people really think it's a Minecraft clone? Or is that just the memes talk? I think that's like a, a self-made meme. I, well, I don't know. I think it, it evolved from Twitch. Everybody on Twitch jokes about it being a Minecraft clone. And I think it's because someone came in and I don't remember who. So, hopefully, so I, hopefully I don't offend anyone. But I'm pretty sure someone came in and they're like, what's the difference between this and Minecraft? And then everyone in chat was like, nothing. It's the same game. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's because they have the characters have square heads, so that's that's pretty much like the one similarity that you could like, like yeah, there's crafting and stuff like that, but it's that's in a lot of games, and those yeah. aren't compared to Minecraft. But I think it's just square heads. But yeah, we could have named our game Minecraft, and it would have fit, but <laughs> it's not Minecraft. We yeah, I, uh, since I've been showing people the game, um, I actually have got this like a, a genuine reaction from a fair few people. Uh, they see the game and they're like, oh, that's really cool. Is it like Minecraft? Yeah. It's like, uh, n n no, uh, I'm just going to go now. Yeah. What's funny <laughs> is that early on when I started coming up with like when the game started getting bigger and it wasn't just like a little open world game anymore, it was kind of like, um, like, what what do I actually want to make this into? And my thought was like, I really like Minecraft. I mean, who, who doesn't really like Minecraft, I guess. Um, and my thought was like, but I really want to explore more in Minecraft and I wish there was more things to explore and quests to do and things like that, more of like adventure stuff and maybe less of like the building stuff. I mean, I don't like, I don't mind the building stuff, but yeah. And so I kind of just flipped those, right? Like I decided like, okay, I'll make something like similar to Minecraft. It can have pretty simple combat and stuff as long as like the exploration and like discovering new items and stuff, that's like the focus and less so like the creative stuff. Um, so it actually spawned from that, and I'm probably talking about it all the time on stream early on. Um, so it, it is kind of funny that everyone thinks it's a Minecraft phone, but 
Yeah. I think that's one of the strengths of Swords of Magic as well, that it draws inspiration so successfully from so many other huge games. <laughs> World of Warcraft. Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah, I personally think that there's a lot of games that it is more similar to than Minecraft. And Zelda. um Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But uh, what has been the most challenging part of the development process so far? I think probably optimization, maybe, or just the sheer amount of work that has to be done. I just look just like like looking at the game and thinking like we have to make this entire zone. It has to have this many new items in it. It has to have this many new monsters or creatures in it. You have to do this many quests in it. Like just looking at that from far away is really challenging. Um, but yeah. also optimization. How about, how about uh, planning and organization of such a huge scale project? Has that been uh, a challenge or has it kind of come naturally? It's been pretty easy for me because um, Diana does it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say um, that that's pretty easy for me because I am the OCD organizer. Um, mm. But I think the challenging part would be balancing because there's so many different systems and there's so many different things playing together that making sure one thing doesn't get you super rich or one thing doesn't go crazy and making sure that they all fit together. Um, that's where I use my spreadsheets. I yeah. love my spreadsheets. But even with spreadsheets, like it's really hard to keep all that stuff together. It is. And like, that's where our yeah. testers really come in to make sure they're like, oh, this one item's really weird. And then we go in and we're like, okay, well, we have to fix this one item because this one item doesn't fall into our, right. our formulas. Yeah, I mean, like when we were designing like farming drops, it was like, oh, lemons. Well, we can do those later in the game. And then like we, so we balanced everything around lemons being later in the game. And then it, we, it dawned on us, like when we were putting things, like putting, like setting up recipes and stuff in the world that the lemonade now costs like 600 gold on like the starter island yeah. that was like the first drink you find. And it's sold by like a six year old <laughs> at a lemonade stand. And it was like, OK, maybe this shouldn't cost 600 gold. We need to rethink this. So balancing yeah. is very tricky when it comes to like big open world crafting mm -hmm. type of games. And yeah. anything with multiple systems. Yeah. yeah, I think we have an extra challenge with balancing as well, because we're trying to target such a wide swath of people. And yeah. make it like uh, exactly challenging enough for people who are into that, but also really accessible for people who um, who aren't as interested in the challenge and we yeah. don't want to exclude any of them and we want to have something for everyone um yeah but that's which, um that's hard yeah i mean i know that there's like a, a a a quote or something about if you design something for everyone you're making something for no one and that's totally totally understand that but uh this one is from youtube what's been the hardest slash most frustrating part of development so far and on it's the, the same side but that's frustrating, not challenging. <laughs> On the flip side, what's been the easiest slash most fun part? I think it's kind of a tie for me. I think optimization is really challenging and or frustrating, I mean. Um, but also probably version control. Um, we have a, I mean, Perforce. We use Perforce and there's just some times where things just don't get pushed or don't get pulled or something just breaks somewhere and we can't figure out why. And that gets very frustrating very fast. Or we get like duplicates, like someone's like, like move something from one level to the other and they didn't have both the levels checked out. And so like, then you push the build and then you have like, like a whole town full of like double NPCs walking around. So that, that kind of stuff gets really frustrating to me. Yeah, I think Perforce is also frustrating to me, but maybe for different reasons. I think I, I fancy myself pretty good with uh, with version control, have like a good understanding of it. But then swapping from um, a Git based version control over to Perforce, well, Perforce is Git based as well, but I've, I've been using uh, uh, GitHub uh, for a good while. Uh, but then it's like everything's slightly different. And uh, it's something that I was really confident in before is now like, oh, <laughs> It's slightly different now. I've made a, a tiny mistake and uh, and I hate myself for it. <laughs> but no, it's fine. Yeah, it's just a little frustrating, little little friction point. What's the easiest, most fun part? For me, it's probably lore and like design. I, I like what like when Joe puts a new feature like on NPCs, my brain just like lights up like i just have a million ideas like what i want to do with like quests and oh i can i can hide this item in the woods and when someone finds it they get a quest and they get to do this thing worth it or i can have this bandit like 
stop you and rob you on the street. Like there's so many cool things. And that's when I'm like, nope, you have to work on this. Stop, <laughs> write it down, get back to it later. Yep. And what else? Most frustrating or easiest, most fun part? Um, Most frustrating for me is probably just sometimes in Unreal Religion and with like version control and everything, sometimes things just like break and it's not anyone's fault. And it's not like no one's actually didn't done anything wrong, really. Things just don't stop working for just game development reasons. Just a big stop. game. And uh, it can just throw a wrench in in that whole day. That yeah. whole work day is just mm -hmm. poof, gone. Because now you just have this like error or something that is just won't go away. Yeah, we've had several days in the last couple of months where it's basically just been like the whole team just like racking our brains trying to figure out what like this one little thing has changed now we can't package a build or something so yeah it happened to me the other day as well i started the day um trying to update my my build on perforce and i ended the day with uh, going to buy a new ssd and installing <laughs> that <laughs> yep anyone for the uh, easiest most fun part yeah the the easiest most fun part for me is probably just like anything related to like creatures is really easy and fun and rewarding the harder stuff is like the headier like systems and everything that's the hard part but just like individual just getting like an individual like creature done or it, it can just you know get, can knock that out in like no time it's like super easy but there's yeah. always other things to be doing <laughs> as well yeah yeah i think the easiest thing for me is uh placing some flowers Placing some grass, putting down a few rocks. If you pass by a nice little patch of flowers, oh no, I had fun. No, that was very easy for me. <laughs> I have a, a, a good combo answer, actually. Okay. Um, easiest and most fun is uh, starting work on a new feature, getting it working in single player. Hardest and most frustrating is uh, finishing the feature, <laughs> making sure it works in multiplayer, fixing all the bugs. That is, that's like game dev summed up though, isn't yeah. it? Like, you're yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna make this cool new thing. And then like 12 hours later, you're like, oh, why do I have to like, I have to go do this whole new thing just to make it work. Yeah, yeah. why do I have to account for the situation where like one player is doing something and another player like leaves and then they come back. Yeah. Like while someone's crafting and it's just like not something that you'd ever think of until you train yourself to think of all the edge cases. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's kind of funny we haven't brought up like multiplayer issues yet, but that's also a huge, huge part of game development that's frustrating or challenging. Yeah, I think that's where most of the issues really are. Like there's some small things, but a lot of them are just with multiplayer. Yep. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so this question has some background, but uh, the question is, will the milk sea ever return to its rightful place? Continually supply us with milk for cereal and stuff. <laughs> So this comes from Oob. Yeah. Um, if you were playing in low graphics in the beginning. Is it, isn't still? I think it's still. Well, it's not as much. Um, the sea just looked like milk. It's pure white. We don't know why. <laughs> still, it still happens. No, we do know why. It's so, it's due to... I don't know well, why. So it's due to the, <laughs> uh, the, the water shader uses a distance to nearest surface function to determine where it puts the sea foam and that samples the um, distance fields in the engine and those distance fields get turned off under a certain um, setting level. So instead of defaulting to uh, a nice deep blue for deep sea, it defaulted to uh, pure white milk slash sea yeah. foam. Yeah. And so oh it's, it, it functions essentially as like an alpha, right, between black and white. And, and yeah, instead of defaulting to black, for some reason, it defaults to all white. Um, but it's an easy, it's actually an easy fix. Um, they're just having- It's just low on the priority list. It. Yeah. I'm gonna say, what are you waiting for? No, yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's kind of been a, a running joke now, I think. Yeah, we'll just leave it in for the memes. Yeah. Well, uh, Oop says, will it ever return? So maybe it, uh, we it low key it. got fixed well, and we forgot. Special, special in event. the haze. Well, Oop got a new computer, so he won't see the milk sea again. Oh, well. Ah, <laughs> understood. <laughs> and he has to ask himself that question. Yeah. Okay, I... so the next question is What do you think about the game story? Are we going to be able to discover more about the story in the farmlands? 
that's a kindred question. Oof. Well, there. Sorry, I okay. just need the desk. <laughs> so, so um, the story is already pretty, pretty well. Like it's written up to a certain point. Um, I myself think it's pretty epic and pretty cool. Um, but it's one of those things that I don't want to start introducing until it's ready to be done, just in case things need to be changed, because things change all the time. Uh, for instance, the uh, magic used to be very, very rare in Tirwin, and it didn't really exist anywhere because um, when the Shardlands uh, disappeared, all the magic pretty, pretty much went with it. Um, so it was supposed to be pretty much a magicless kind of society. But, you know, in a game called Swords of Magic and stuff, it was just kind of like, well, how, do we, how are we going to, like, give players magic? Um, if there's not supposed to be any magic. So we just decided to write in something new um, to kind of fix that. And so now there's a whole story about that. And so the main story is one of those things that like it evolves slowly and I'm really excited to introduce it. And I keep dropping little hints about it through dialogue here and there. Um, you'll hear all the time like, oh, with the king missing, blah, 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 blah. And, and so I think um, we're going to slowly start dropping more and more hints. And once we're ready, like once probably we have a couple more zones under our belt, we might you might like find a, a breadcrumb somewhere that leads you into a bigger quest for the main storyline. So it'll it'll get there. Um, I think the yeah. the main thing was though that there, you don't have to do the main storyline. Oh yeah, it's totally it's totally like a it's almost like a secret quest. Yeah, so it's one of those things that it's kind of off where you can do it. You don't have to do it. You can just explore the world and discover what it has to offer. But there is a storyline going on. It's just you're not the main character of that storyline. Yep, and you never will be. You'll you'll always be, um, you'll always be kind of like just this random adventurer who just happens to be at the right place at the right time, um, or the wrong place at the, the right time, I guess, um, or the wrong time, the wrong place at the wrong time, <laughs> or the, or the wrong, wrong place at the, the right time. time. <laughs> yep. I will say that doesn't mean you'll never be, you know an important hero. adventurer yeah. or a hero it just means you're not you're the not dovahkiin right yeah. you're not um you're not link uh awakening and getting his master sword you are just like uh oh, help me out what's a random adventurer you are you are whoever you want to be sure. yeah you're, you're whoever you want to be. you will uh, be assisting with some pretty heroic deeds and in in the process be doing your own pretty hero deeds if you follow the main storyline all right so the next question comes through youtube how are you and the team handling post ea release early access release i hope you're all in high spirits but with the gap in programming and the innate pressure of the internet i'm curious how you guys are holding up keep on keeping on so uh we should probably clarify there's not really a gap in programming uh, I think with the recent changes to uh, to the team, it might be easy to assume that there's a gap in programming, but even uh, even before I came along, um, Kindred and Joe had it handled, uh, and now that I'm here, it's definitely handled. Yeah. Um, one thing that I really love doing is programming. Um, I've just never really considered myself a programmer or, or good at it, but I really love Blueprints and I really love Unreal Engine and I love the power that it gives me as like more of a visual person and an artist be able to create things and what one, one of my goals this year was just to really up my game when it came to programming i wanted to learn about network code and i wanted to learn about just all the all the things i needed to do to like sort of like make a game i guess i just wanted to have a, a better understanding of it so i could help out more and fix bugs and just be a bigger part of the programming side of the, the project and i feel like i've leveled up a lot last year um yeah, in order to do that definitely can confirm yeah yeah so i mean when when we when the team dynamic changed um it kind of it, it was like we were trying to decide if we should hire a 3d modeler or a programmer because i was going to be doing one of those things more often um we decided to go with programmer because there's a lot more programming work that needs done than like modeling work um and i'm pretty fast at modeling and i feel like it's gonna be harder to match that style than it will be programming style um so i but yeah like right after right after that whole thing changed uh i was already in making destructible pots and crates um and working on like what needed to be done next so we didn't really have much of a, of a gap there yeah you did a lot of the crafting yourself yeah i did i'm super proud of that by the way <laughs> i think probably like what 80 percent of the, the crafting system not like the whole system but like the crafting window and the actual process of like 
creating an item was mm -hmm. was all me, baby. Blacksmith's with workbench, uh, carpentry workbench, tailoring workbench. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun. But the uh, the question itself, though, how are we handling post early access release <laughs> and the pressures of the internet? Um, so early access release was a bit of a nightmare for us. Mm -hmm. We just didn't know what to expect, and we were not ready for that. Um, I mean, like as far as the game being like finished, we got a lot of feedback and we implemented our, the feedback as fast as we possibly could because we're really big in feedback. And like, if players don't like the game, then we're doing something wrong. Um, and I think we're really good about taking that feedback and 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 learning from it rather than just getting like angry about and it. just taking feedback of, oh, I thought this would have done this. That'd mm -hmm. be a cool idea. And then we were like, yeah, that'd be a great idea. And we just kind of implement that. Yeah. Like sleeping in bed. Yeah. Today, someone was saying um, that they really wish there was a sword as like a like a hide like recipes you can't like craft. And it took me like half an hour. And I implemented it. So now you can pick a box and it hide. And no one on the team knows this. this is a surprise. I didn't <laughs> tell when I was doing this. Um, I was literally just thinking that. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you did what? <laughs> when? Yeah, you can. Yeah, so you can now take a box and it just hides all the recipes that you can't craft um, based you on your resources. Nice yeah, it was like awesome. it was super easy, but it was one of the things that we just didn't think about. And then someone was saying it on stream and I was like, oh, yeah, why didn't we do that? So, um, yeah. yeah, not just negative feedback too, just like also just opinions and stuff. So I think early access yeah. was a blessing and a curse, I guess. Um, it was really nice seeing people love the game. We got crazy good reviews compared to most early access games, I think. Um, but at the same time, like it was really good seeing negative reviews too, because it told us like, hey, we're missing the point here. We're missing our target. Um, I, th I think it's more like we read all the reviews. Mm -hmm. So we, we take everything and those reviews that are just like two words aren't helpful for us. Or the reviews that say like, there's not enough content in this game. And, and then there's like hours. 20, 20 or 30 hours of gameplay. And it's like, wait a minute. Even yeah. even those reviews though, uh, I wasn't on the team yet, but I saw you guys talking about them. Um, and it's it's a symptom, right? Uh, and, and you take that seriously. Uh, we know we have, or you know, you had a lot of content in the in the game. Uh, so to see someone say, "Hey, there's not enough content," um, means that you they're don't just dismiss the it. feedback. They're yeah. not finding it, uh, or it appears that there isn't um, for some other. The the diagnosis is elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and with Swords of Magic, that's a that's actually a real problem because a lot of our content is discovery, right? It's mm -hmm. all secrets. So if you don't pay attention if you're just expecting the game to tell you exactly where to go and what to do you're probably playing the wrong game and that's exactly what those reviews mean you know i mean the fact that they played 30 hours tells me they did they found something to do right um, but yeah <laughs> so people true. people complaining about content um it's typically because they're not looking in the right places and so that is feedback we should be taking and and okay well how do we introduce this content better how do we teach players what to look for and i think that's where yeah. our tutorial has changed dramatically so many times yeah. like i can't even count how many times we've just introduced new things fixed new things changed it so you can kind of get that feel for the game while it's sort of hand-holdy and teaching you what to do there's a lot of stuff that's not on there so it's teaching you that there's stuff you need to explore for yourself yep. like there is secrets everywhere oh yeah i mean the tutorial is probably arguably the most important part of the game you know um the and end you can is... still skip it too right yeah yeah which some people do inadvertently, you and know, they're, they're like, just like, oh, what do I do if, this? can I jump off here and go swim to the island? Oh, I can. OK, cool. I'm going to do that. And then they're wondering three hours later why they don't have a glider. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's why we have a second opportunity to get that glider. Exactly. And that's like the kind of feedback, right? Like some people would say, like, well, I swam to the island and now I don't I don't have a weapon. Like, how am I supposed to fight these crabs that are killing me? And it's like, oh, shoot, how do we do that? So we had to, instead of giving the, the player a weapon through like dialogue, we had to make sure there was one laying on the ground somewhere. So um, yeah, anyway, um, but back to the actual question, how do we handle early access? And I'm assuming this is more about like, like they, like they said, the, the pressure of the internet. Um, and I would say most people are, I mean, I think we get pretty good praise. Like, I don't think we have a lot yeah. of negative feedback. I, mean, I think our, like our videos, our devlogs and stuff get a handful of downvotes. And every time I'm just like, I wish I could ask that person what they didn't like about it. Like, that's always my, my question. I'm never angry about it. I don't really care if they don't like something. Um, and it's on YouTube, for everybody. Yeah. And on YouTube, a dislike uh, is just as good as a like. The, like, you can have a billion dislikes and YouTube will share it like crazy because they're like, oh, yeah, this is going to get views. People hate this. 
So I don't care if you dislike the video, but I am curious, like, why? So if you are a person who likes to dislike the videos, um, comment. Let me know why. Because I, I genuinely want to know what it is that is like you dislike about it. And if it's just not your type of game, then that's understandable. Yeah, and we tend to respond I, to. I don't say tend to. We we do respond to everyone, or at least like it, or yeah, answer and the team and the community and our moderators and everyone is very quick to wherever you comment on Twitter on steam on youtube on discord we were pretty quick on getting back to everyone's feedback or comments so that we can understand or implement something or yep. change something or yeah. whatever I think thanks to our community moderators as well yes definitely mm -hmm. i think um i think part of the difficulty of releasing an early access though is that everyone assumes that your game's gonna die in a few months you know um and because we decided to go dark for this update, that is that has been a bit of a problem. So a lot, a lot of people think that the game is dead. Um, hopefully this this Q and A and this uh, then trailer and the update coming out and doubling the size of the yeah. game will be enough to <laughs> let people know that it's not dead. But um, I'm yeah, not sure that's... how people think that anyway because uh, you're always so busy on on Twitch. Yeah, that's true. I stream at least well. at least once or twice a week. It's been a little little slower lately. It's been once a week lately because of the update, but. Um, yeah, I usually stream twice a week at least, um, and I we always talk about the progress. Everyone can. I'm working on stream every single time. I never play games on stream. Can you so. answer well, if, if you see the questions? You oh, yes. Them. If I happen to notice chat for a minute, then I will answer the questions. But <laughs> um, and hey, yeah. if you're uh, if you're not on our Discord uh, once a week, every week Jana goes through and posts uh, everything that we've added to the game via um, Vertical Control in a big development digest. It's very exciting. Yeah, a lot Make of people... Make sure to take out the secrets, though. I well, wanna... most of them. Sometimes we hint at secrets. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't want to spoil stuff. Yeah, but it, I mean, it's fun, though, because a lot of people a lot of people who are excited about the uh, the update and they're, like, eager to play it, they read through those, and then they're like, wait, what does this mean? Are we adding this to the game? And it's like, yes, there yeah, is even, farming. And even our testers, the they're like, I love reading those, and I've played it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, plus, oh. it's, it's fun to write them sometimes. Like, yeah, for example, is. instead of saying, like, uh, fixed a bug where an item was missing. I typed in like gave Xanthus another stack of pamphlets to hand out. Yeah, <laughs> which is a lot more fun. There was there was one week where Lewis was like, Jana, don't put this in, <laughs> and, and Kindred it's was embarrassing. like, Kindred was like, uh, put it in, put it in. No. It went in. Just so you know. It did go in. I, <laughs> I'm fully aware. I saw it. I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was but like it's just, embarrassing. It's just the fun. I cleaned up all my terrible programming practices. Nah. No, it's There's just it's also terms. fun between the team to, to do that as well because yeah I don't know like yeah. this week I put like redacted something redacted because I was like yeah. I don't want to share these secrets but stuff got added yeah and it's just it's just fun for the team I think but if you aren't on our Discord you should definitely join because we are all very active on there um, what's the, the thing Discord.gg slash Kindred Games yep. I always forget if it's GG. Yeah, like, we're official now. We're partner? Verified. Verified, not partnered. Not partnered. There's a difference. But Discord, if you're listening, we would love to be partnered. <laughs> anyway, All right. let's move on. Yes. Okay. Hey, that was so, a that was a good question. We spent a long time on that one. That was. Thank you, or, Alan, on YouTube. Or we're just really good at rambling. Or both. We don't know. A bit of both. Yeah. Okay, so next question is, are you going to come back to areas you've already added into the game and add more to them in the future? Wendy, it's you. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. There's, um, for example, there's areas in Ramshackle Reef. Uh, there's a whole quest line uh, over there that will be in, in an update at some point. And when that happens, you'll just you'll know and farmlands is going to be um continuously developed uh from player feedback and from things that we notice uh and we'll always be going back to areas that we've been to before you know to add in uh, new mechanics when they come and uh, new items when we see fit and you know maybe we say oh well the quest can do this now uh I really wanted this quest to do this before, so now I can go make it do that. Uh, and dungeons, of course, when dungeons come in, they'll be something that we go back to. So there's 
While there's a lot ahead of us in terms of new land, there's also a lot ahead of us in terms of areas that you've already been to uh, and might be worth exploring again someday. Definitely. That was a good summary. I like it. Okay. Next. Um, oh, oh, I oh. want to add on to that. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. I know. I just want to ramble. Yeah. I just want to hear oh myself. Oh my gosh. Talk. Oh my gosh, Kindred. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, one feature we want to add in, um, and I hope you didn't say this and I just glossed over it, but um, we want to add a mailbox system in where in the future, when we add new content from old zones, um, you can sometimes get a letter in the mail uh, and that, that way we can alert players like there's something new to do here that you may have already done in this area, but now there's something else to come back to, um, which we're really excited about. Yeah, that uh, that mailbox feature is one of those ones uh, from the, the previous question where you really want to work on A, but B needs doing more. Um, mailboxes have been calling to me, That's but I have been, uh, I've been strong and I've uh, resisted the call and uh, the update's going to come out on time. So that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> that, that question is more like when you really want to work on A, B, C, and D, but E needs to get done more. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure fishing is in there. Uh, oh my god, fishing. Crafting mini yeah. games. I really want to work on bug catching. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh, I can't wait for all the bugs. <laughs> Uh, this is why we can't just like run free though. No. If we just had free reign over yeah. whatever we want to work on, we'd be in trouble. Yeah. And then Kindred has to make uh, 800 different food models. And yeah. Icons. And then I have oh, to add word, all yeah. those items in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which we still love. It's just like yes. fishing, mailboxes, bug catching. There's just, there's just so much that's planned for the game that we just want in right now. And yeah. we can't really work like that because then we'll yeah. all just be spread so thin and nothing will get done. So Until they invent a cloning machine. Yes. Yes. Okay, so the next question. What features are you most excited for in the upcoming Farm and Forge update? Mine, 100% cooking and farming. Oh yeah, it's super fun. Yeah. Well, I also balanced it and made it, so I'm really excited for it. <laughs> I love doing it, but I'm biased. I am excited for... I think just exploring a new zone. It's so cool to like, like Sleepy Haven is so amazing. It's so it's cool. It's so like, huge and I get lost all the time. Yeah, which is a good thing. Yeah, because it then I'm like, a, I've never been in this building. This, Where, where's this been? Sleepy Haven is probably gonna get its own map here soon. It just needs it. Yeah. Um, it, It's just, I love the idea that like players can finally like build, like repair that ferry, take it over the mainland and they just open up to this whole new zone to explore. And I think I'm just mostly excited that they get to this run around and, and meet new characters and find new items and new quests and stuff. And unfortunately, we didn't get enough quests in, um, I think, like, in my opinion, and I think Wendy's opinion, I think we still want more content in the zone. And we'll just be trickling that content in as we go. But um, there's yeah. a lot of quests. There's, there, a, there's a lot to do. It's just, um, you know, as always, we're like, oh, my gosh, what if there was more? Yeah. Yeah, like I just, want I want more secret quests. Like we just, we kind of just kept adding more and more secret quests into Azura. And I just want that same level of like, it's just chock full. There's just everywhere you turn, yeah. it's just like, oh, what's this thing? More There's secrets. a secret quest here. So that, that yeah. that's what I meant. It's more like more okay. secrets and stuff. What, Wendy? I said it'll happen. Yeah, uh, it, you know, just time, just takes time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Um, All right, everyone else. I'm most excited for moving NPCs. Yeah. They walk, they sit. They're very well trained NPCs. Joe <laughs> well, did a job. great job on they this. Fetch. Most of them are pretty well trained. But we'll, we're, work, we're working on it. Some of them sit way too well. <laughs> <laughs> they do, actually. That's a really funny bug. No, I've already fixed it, but it's, it's already funny. fixed. But we should, um, if we have an image, we should put it up um because it's hilarious yeah. what was it basically if you created the npc sitting down yeah then anytime it walked to a new place and decided to like stand there for a while it would uh it would just like squat down and be doing squats <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yep, yep. so good it's always leg day in tier one yeah yep. yeah <laughs> But it's fixed now before the update comes out, so you won't get to see that unless we put the image in. Yep. And if we don't, well, you'll never get to see it. Joe, what about you? I mean, kind of that, just because it's a lot of what I've been working on lately are the NPCs. Um, and I'm really excited to also just expand on them more. But 
Uh, I think they're going to bring a lot of life to the game and they add a lot of like extra like ways we can handle quests and stuff. Uh, it's, it's really exciting to me. I'm also really excited to see people discover the many secrets we did add in that we did get to. Yeah, one particular secret. Yeah. Mm. Secrets. Yeah. If you're one. making videos, we'll be watching. Yeah. <laughs> one one very particular secret. I'm very excited about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. okay. Next. Lewis, did you answer that? You answered that. Uh, I, like I, I don't have a very good thing. answer. Let me see. Uh, I'm excited for the fairy because uh, it's one thing where at the start I was like, I'm not sure how viable this is with the way we have it envisioned, uh, but it does work really well in single player and multiplayer. Um, and I think crafting is just uh, it's a, it's a vibe. It's really it's really satisfying. Um, and mm -hmm. it's been good to watch uh, some of the preview streamers uh, having such a good time with cooking. Uh, it's wild how much, how important it is to the main gameplay loop. Um, yeah, whereas before food and drink was important, but it wasn't something that you were always engaging with. Now cooking is like, it's always there if you want it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also think it's very fun uh, watching streamers be excited about crafting and cooking because, ooh, I can empty some of my inventory slots. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And being able to, being able to buy bank slots too. Yeah. So you can cram more stuff in there. Yeah. I was telling someone who was streaming, they were like, well, if you give the option to hoard, then they're going to hoard. And I was like, well, originally we really didn't have that. Like you had a limited set number of stuff you could hold. And, and with all that feedback we took, we made it the encumbered system and we added bank slots now and it's just all that kind of stuff is just it's little but it's exciting mm -hmm. it's adding that that gameplay yeah and it all ties together as well you can cook food to um, reduce the amount in your inventory but you can also eat food to increase the amount you can carry mm -hmm. depending yep. on what food you eat yeah and i just love how it's many bucks got together. added for the food too just awesome okay um next question this comes from steam Character attributes, will they be added? I understand that there is no leveling in the game and it's a quite light RPG in the sense of progression, but if you do have some ideas in the works, could you share with us? So, yeah. I think oh, that, yeah, you can. Could you? Um, sure. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, that is one thing, one thing that we've, like, kind of been avoiding since the beginning. We don't... Really, like what it is is that the reason we don't have like a standard like leveling system with like attributes and stuff that just get better over time is because we don't ever want players to be hard locked from playing with each other. So, if you can level up and you're level 100 and you have like plus 100 health and all this stuff all the time um, because you're just been playing longer, and then your brand new friend, I mean, not your brand new, yeah, maybe it's a brand new friend you just met, who knows? Um, but they come into the game and they're playing a brand new character, um, and you're you want to play together they might like it's not going to work out very well unless you start a new character and that's been one of those things that i've always disliked about playing games with like janna or just anyone really is having to like one of us have to start a brand new character to play together because otherwise it's just not fun to play um and so in this situation like we just want to make sure that players can always play together um even if that means like putting some of the stuff in your bank or equipping different weapons or whatever or just giving your friend a new weapon that's 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 stronger you know um, which I guess we've kind of like dumbed down a little bit lately, but um, you can always just give your friend like a really powerful potion if you want to. And now suddenly they're just as strong as you or powerful food or something. And that's where the skills come into play. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of where we've, where we've moved from is instead of like your character specifically getting better, you have all these skills that you learn and unlock. So not to not not just like combat skills, like, you know, your mace skill and your dagger skill but also your farming skill now and your crafting skills all level up and those are that's where your character really grows and so that's where all the progression is really is just how you play your character you're going to be leveling skill, skills no matter what you do if you want to be a, a farmer you're going to be leveling farming and cooking um or or crafting stuff um or if you just want to do combat stuff you're going to be leveling combat skills so you're always progressing as, a, as your like your character is always progressing um so we're not really wanting to add in like character attributes nothing like locked to your character it's all gonna be based on gear and sort of like the way you play um i think that just like getting better better in general when you level up is not really the play not the like the direction you want to go in it's just more about like how you play i guess so um but we talked about things like 
the rune stones that you can like sock into your equipment and stuff like that that will sort of give you like buffs right and bonuses to your character but i think for the most part what we're really aiming for is just you discovering new things um and that's what gets you better right so everything comes down or boils down to discovery if you discover a new secret area and it gives you a new weapon or something then you're now that much stronger or if you discover some new runes to put on your weapons or whatever then you're that much stronger or if you discover new seeds to grow to grow new to cook new foods you're that much stronger and it's not just about like generally playing the game it's about discovery there's my super long-winded answer good answer <laughs> yeah gear-based progression um we're doing some refactoring and uh, tidying up now after this update, now that we've got a little bit of breathing room, working towards uh, those, you know, gear-based character attributes. Because I think one thing attributes do really well is um, create different, like, uh, character roles, um, combat styles, that kind of thing, uh, which works really well for multiplayer, which is something that we're really interested in um, making exciting, different, like, you know, party roles basically so yeah definitely working towards that um mm. yeah the, the fact that you can you can go into a potion shop and find like a potion that increases your mining like skill right and then another potion for luck now and then you can just like grab your pickaxe grab those two or handful of potions however you buy and then head into the mines and you drink them and now you've got like these stats that affect like how well you're finding things like you can now plan out your day a little more and it's less about just kind of doing whatever you see in front of you. And it's more about like, what do I want to do today? I should use these potions that I have. So let's go mining today. Do I um, need to tend to my garden? Yeah, my exactly. Food. So it, I think it's just the stats on like weapons and items and things like that now, and especially food, just lets you kind of like, you get to sort of spec your character every single day in game, right? So instead of worrying about like your overall like stat progression and your, and your spec and like, worrying about like oh did i put this point in the right place or did i level up the right way or should i pick a different class you get to worry more about like like nothing is really like that permanent right so if you eat the wrong food for the day and you've accidentally eaten something that gives you luck instead of focus or whatever then i just go mining instead or or hey i mean the luck's gonna help right like go get some loot that day so i think it just feels really good right now okay what's next okay so from the same person on Steam. They're saying that they find that secrets are quite hard to find. They found a specific chest with chaos magic note next to it, but it said that the key had been thrown somewhere in the ocean, but they, they had no idea. There was no other things with that. So is there going to be something to narrow down like locations with those kinds of secrets or help make secrets easier to find? Can we give a hint? Because people sometimes ask about this one on Discord, and uh, when they get the hint, they're like, um... Sure. Give him a hint. Uh, you want to be reading the, the dialogue a bit more closely, right? Yeah. So this is one of those things that we are trying to kind of think of better ways to do. So early on, I wanted to add this really robust system where you could talk to an NPC. And if you had certain like tags that for like quests, like say you say you found a book about a sword, right? And then like certain NPCs like um, like a blacksmith or whatever, you could ask about that sword if you had that task. It would just give you like these generic like answers. And like when we broke that system down, it was just really, really complex and probably not really super viable. So that's one of those things that kind of just got dumped. And so because of that, secrets are pretty hard to find. And some of these secrets are supposed to be hard to find. And that's sort of like the draw of them, right? If it was easy to find, um, it wouldn't feel as rewarding when you finally figured it out. And also, there's so many secrets in the game, and there's there's planned to be so many more that the whole point of that is not so you can find every single one. It's the point of that is so every time you play through, or when or if you and your friend both play through the game, um, one of you is going to find some secrets, and the other one's going to find others, and then you can talk about it and share and swap items and 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 have that experience of like, wow, look at this cool thing I found. Um, it's a key to this place or whatever. Let's go check it out together. Like that yeah. that kind of stuff I think is really cool, and it's sort of invaluable to have in games like this. That's why I like those uh, interactions on Discord as well, where someone's like, oh, hey, can, who can tell me about this? And then instead of being like, you know, here's a link to the, the wiki page, or here's the steps to complete the quest, it's like, oh, well, have you talked to this person? Like, right. maybe it's not in the ocean anymore. Maybe, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe someone found it. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, I mean, on, on the flip side of that, I also understand that some playpers, some playpers, 
What is that? That's like, a I was I think that was people and, and players. Um <laughs> Some players. <laughs> some players really want to find everything and I totally respect that I get it um and in that in those situations we want to add more more secrets or more uh, more clues for the secrets um it's just it's difficult right there's a lot of secrets and it's difficult to decide where those clues should be and what they should be um early on I really wanted to make sure that there were books and lore and things like that that always led to some sort of treasure so if you found a book about you know um an ancient sword or something like you can find a book about like the ghost of the waterfall well there's actually a ghost there you can interact with we're not going to tell you how but there is um and there's other books about like you know ancient weaponry and swords and stuff and those things exist in the game and you can you can you know recover them or you can you can uh, obtain those things so yeah i like doing it that way like having like lore and stuff and there's a whole library in sleepy haven that i have not even got to yet and i'm sure i'm gonna fill it with all kinds of cool secrets and like hints at different things so I would say that is really good feedback and we should be implementing more clues and more hints for those secrets that talk about them in more places. So you have a better collection of, of information and better like, resources to figure out where to go. If you're the type of player who wants to do that extra work or legwork to, to figure that out. The next question is asking about the Switch version, which I think is one of like the main questions we get oh, all yeah. the time. This is a big like, Big question um very common question so nintendo switch or nintendo in general does not allow you to release games that are unfinished on its platform as far as i'm aware um, when i looked into it last you cannot release early access or beta versions of games on their platform that really stings because our big like like the, the big goal for Kickstarter was we wanted to get the game on Switch. That was all that was kind of our dream is like, I want to get a game on console. That would that would be a huge thing to like see it on console and one day maybe see it in stores would be huge for me. That was like the ultimate dream, right? Um, but then we found out that we're making this big early access game that we plan on just updating over time until it's finally finished, which who knows how long that'll take. We don't really have much of a roadmap for that, that the end game like that. Um, so when we found out that we couldn't just launch it on on Switch right away, that really hurt. Uh, it really sucks. But it is what it is. So one day when the game is finished, um, if the Switch is even relevant anymore, then we will do what we can to get it on there. Uh, but there's but... a good chance that there's another console out by then, and maybe we'll aim for that one instead. But Steam Deck December will be there. Yep. Yeah, so... We uh, Steam Deck was just announced recently, and mm -hmm. we are very excited about it as far as like development mm -hmm. goes. Um, we've already pre-ordered a copy yep. for <laughs> us. Oh, really? Nice yep. one. We have, and we're very excited to check out Swords of Magic on it because, as far as we can tell, as long as your game has some semblance of of, of controller support, or actually, I guess it doesn't even need that because it has uh, touchpads. You can plug in a keyboard, and you can and plug mouse. in a keyboard and mouse if you want to. Um, so yeah, you will be able to play Swords of Magic on the Steam Deck when that releases. Yeah. So. And you you will also be able to play it on Switch, and I'm sure that we'll be out of early access, and the Switch will still be around. Um, <laughs> I mean, we can release on Wii U still. So. Oh my gosh. That's true, I suppose. Swords of Magic is not. Well, nothing's never say never, but we don't plan to come to Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> but we definitely have concrete plans to, to come to Switch. I'm very excited for it. Um, it's my favorite Same. console by far. And I think uh, Swords of Magic is a really great fit for the Switch. So uh, yes. so do be excited for that. Um, yeah. It's just, we, we would love to be on early access on Switch, uh, releasing updates roughly as frequently as you do on Steam. But uh, with the certification, and uh and all that whole process um yeah early access just isn't supported on um on very many consoles yeah i mean not to so, mention uh, that even like xbox um it's there's quite a few hoops to jump through as far as i remember to do an update and so if every yes. two weeks we launch an update um xbox players probably won't get those updates for every every few months it, um, yeah it's all even, about uh, certification yeah so it's, i mean like even if we had those updates ready um we just you just have to wait for those things to become to get accepted so yeah they need to recertify the entire game every update which is why um updates are a lot less frequent on consoles right just in case we hit any rick rolls in there or anything so. <laughs> any rick rolls 
Yeah, or, you know, whatever. Something that's not supposed to have in there. <laughs> Coconut mold. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah. We are definitely... There's definitely plans for the Switch. It's definitely still in the plans. Um, oh, but yeah. the game has to get done first. So, mm -hmm. so I would suggest um, buying a gaming PC and buying Forza Magic on Steam for now. Or the Steam Deck. Or the Steam Deck. When it comes out next year. Yep. How much is the Steam Deck? I think the... the $3.99. Yeah, the low end, I think, is three ninety nine. So... A little more than the Switch, I think. Yes. Three fifty, I think, for the Switch. Three ninety nine. And these are all just like know. USD value values, and we don't actually have a clue, so don't don't take our word for it. Just go look it up yourself. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. The next question, which is the last one. Last question. What zone is coming next after Farmlands? And I'm just gonna add a question of my own of what is coming next, just in general. Well, you can't ask that. We don't know yet. Well. Just, just kidding, we know. We definitely know. <laughs> we we do know. I mean, we can't do details of exactly when and stuff, but we do have an idea. We know. We know um, things. So, Wendy and I have talked about doing another pass to the farmlands and just adding more stuff in. Um, there's just a lot of things that we really wanted to add that we didn't have time to do. And I'm glad we Same decided to... Same treatment Azura got, right? Yes. Pretty much exactly. Um... It's just, it's one of those things where I would rather get the update out and get you guys playing something rather than uh, put it off for six months um, and then and, and finally release everything. And even if we did that, we would, we'd would we still have things that we started and, and weren't able to finish in time. So we'd have to hold them back. Um, but some of those things that we would really like to go back through for the farmlands for the next update is going to be mount racing, um, perhaps some carnival games in Moonberry Farms. Um, what else is there? There's a couple other things we're missing. Oh, how about there's um, the fighting arena. Yes. Um, uh, and we're hoping to have that set up and hopefully the one on Azura too, so that you can fight things in it and not just each other. Yep. Yeah. So the Fighters Guild is going to get a nice little update where they actually, um, there will be a reputation with Fighters Guild and you'll be able to uh, basically fight other enemies or creatures or people um in like waves or like stage form sort of um and we don't have all the details on that yet so stay tuned but that's really exciting um and yeah the and the the area in azura is actually a pvp arena so you can fight your friends as well and we never we didn't have a chance to get that into farmlands so we'll be adding that into farmlands so you can fight each other in azura and then you can head to the farmlands and you can re you can get redemption you know <laughs> you as you, you level lost. up your skills. Yes, yeah, so you can avenge your your previous avenge. That's not the word. Sure, whatever. You can avenge yourself. Sure. You can get revenge on your <laughs> maybe, you. on your friends who beat you on Azura. We got a few new enemy types coming as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, housing. More farm animals. Yep. More, more, farm, more animals. farm animals. Uh, I won't spoil it, but there's a cow coming. <laughs> Cows are coming in, and you will be able to get milk from cows, uh, similar to how you get wool now from sheep. Um, yeah, and then housing. Housing is the big one that we have put off like 12 times now. And this time around, the housing got put off because of a slight bug that we are we still haven't been able to tackle. And it's we're very close to finishing, I think. I think we have a good way to handle it now. And so once that is fixed, and then we have some time to model like 100 furniture pieces and there's get icons okay. and stuff no, for there's them. There's tons of furniture really already yeah. in the game. He doesn't even realize how much is in there already. I just Because I already put them on my list to start getting them ready. But yeah. I, I do want to add that housing wasn't like pushed back because we just because we weren't ready for it or because of the bug. It was more that we're really self-conscious about the player experience. And we want to make sure that when we implement something, it's not going to be something where if you lose it or something happens that it's going to be really bad. So we haven't put that housing in yet because it, the bug that we're currently finding to make it so your house will disappear. So everything that you've put into it and we don't want you to have that experience. So we're making sure that you won't before we actually implement it. Yeah, I think yeah, it would be. The, we already have the fix for that work now. Just yeah. got to get it yeah. in. Exactly. So like we've already gone through the steps and by the time we'd gone through the steps, we already had the date for the update. 
and we knew we wouldn't have time so that was one of those things where we had to make the tough decision to not put it in this update so that we had to make so that we had that 100 percent. we knew this was working before putting it out so it was a completed feature yeah we had a we had a big item like re-roll um when was that like december december mm -hmm. where we had to we had to uh, like kind of shift how all the items worked and rename a lot of things and we had to make a table that like converted old item IDs into new item IDs. And even though we did that process, a lot of players still lost a lot of items. And we don't want that sort of thing to happen again for housing, um, no matter what the problem is, whether you know it's a it's a, a bug or whatever. Um, because losing a few items, no big deal. Losing some some like uh, wind whirlers you place down, no big deal. Losing some crops you put down and are farming. Who cares? Um, but if you put a whole house down and you decorate the whole thing and all of your stuff is in it and you've got a, a garden in the backyard and, you know, whatever else, and then suddenly you open up the game one day and there's been an update and all your stuff is completely gone or your world's corrupt and you have to start a new one, uh, that that ruins the experiences for people. And we mm -hmm. are doing everything we can to make sure that is 100 percent before that comes out. And that, so. That's that's the real reason that housing has been has been pushed so far back because we want to make sure that we have tackled that full experience and that doesn't happen. All right. I think we're done. Those are, we... those are Wait, all the questions. Nobody answered what zone is coming next. Oh, yeah. That was, that was my question. <laughs> the only question. The <laughs> only question. The next zone is going to be, I guess. Windless Woods. I mean, Okay, so part of Windless Woods got released this time. We were actually planning on doing more of it, but we kind of ran out of time and didn't have the resources to uh, fill out the rest of it. So you're actually going to get Western Windless Woods first. Um, and maybe if we decide to do a bigger update or if we have time, we'll do the Eastern as well. But we actually are kind of thinking we might start splitting up our zones a little smaller so you guys get more frequent content updates. Um, but we're not really sure yet. So next is definitely Western Windless Woods. And there is some really cool stuff coming in that update. There is. There's a, there may be a, a, spoil it. a small village coming. Oh. <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> um, we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, we're really excited about it. So Western Windless Woods is definitely coming next, followed by Eastern Windless Woods if we, if we don't get it in the next update. And then after that, I'm pretty sure we're going straight to Bone Reach. Right, Wendy? Bone Reach. That's right. So in Bone the of the Wild Orcs. Yep. Um, and you may actually encounter some Wild Orcs in the current update. Who knows? Maybe you'll start seeing them. We'll see. Um, they but, got out early. Yep, maybe. <laughs> they um, escaped. They might be scouting or something. You never know. But yeah, the Bone Reach is like a more like Barrens kind of like... Um, uh, what's it Badlands. Called? Yeah, sort of just like not quite a desert, but like cliffs and um, canyons and stuff it's it's very it's really cool looking um you can see a lot of it from like outside and uh it's completely different colors than... yeah it's a totally different feel from everything so far which is exciting uh which is i think what we're most excited about is mm -hmm. getting something new in um but yeah so and you'll you'll get to meet all of the orcs um some of the orcs and yeah it'll be fun but yeah stay tuned so that's that's it. Anyone have anything they'd like to add about anything? Bone Reach is uh all oh, the the wild orcs are a big part of the main storyline, aren't they? Um yes and no. The wild orcs is sort of like a a branch of the storyline that's it's caused mm. because of the main storyline, but they don't have a whole lot to do with the like the actual outcome of the storyline. But they may. Maybe we'll, you know, uh only like half of the storyline is actually written, so um, they might come back in. You never know. And uh, Tooth is coming back from the single player build, right? Yeah, I don't know if anyone remembers Tooth. It's so, so long ago. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Tooth ever even actually like made it in the game. But yeah, so Tooth is the uh, like warlord or chieftain of the Wild Orcs, and he does not like, um, I guess, the king. He doesn't like King Owen, and he does not like how the the world is now. Um, it's too, it's too boring for him, I guess. Too friendly, so he wants to <laughs> take over. So that's that's what's happening in Bone Reach in Bone Reach right now. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's it. 
thanks for that's a lot of good questions and... yeah thank you guys for helping me answer all those questions yeah yeah of course if you guys Pleasure. like this sort of um q a format uh let us know in the comments and like the video and maybe we will make more of them um or i've even actually if you just want like more than michael to be talking about yeah <laughs> so i like this format it's it's way more casual and it's way easier to like talk about like what's coming on or what's going on in the game and what's, what's coming up next and stuff than it is to like write a whole script and i forget all kinds of stuff and usually by the time i get the script finished it's like out of date like all that stuff's already like old news and we're already working on new things that are way more exciting to talk about so um maybe you know that like this this kind of format's kind of cool maybe we like once a week we sit down and with someone on the team and we go over like some big new thing we've been working on like maybe i don't know you guys let us know if you like this maybe once we a should week. we should do more add to my calendar no, i don't mm -hmm. have time for once a add week to my maybe list. like once a year no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no we can definitely uh, do it more frequently yeah I think the people are here for you, but uh, I'm uh, feel super lucky to be able to pop into a video like this. So if people are interested in more stuff, it'd be be interesting to hear. Yeah. Um. There was a question. I don't know if it got added. Did you look over the YouTube questions? Mm -hmm. You did, right? Yeah. Um. But there was a question about where have all the um, devlogs gone, right? I asked that somewhere. No, oh, that was one of your responses. You put huh? you put the question, and then one of your responses for people to vote on was where have all the devlogs gone? Oh, okay. So it wasn't actually a, or... well, whatever. But everyone voted for that one. So um, I just wanted to like touch on that. Um, so devlogs are one of those things that I don't like doing. Um, it's one of those things that's extra on top of the game. Yeah, I like I like communicating with fans a lot. That's why I stream on Twitch. That's why you should check it out. twitchtv games. Um, but also like making devlogs is like doing it's just it's it's not something i enjoy doing i don't like writing scripts i don't want to like i want to talk about the game but i don't want to like write it all out and make it all formal and stuff and i could just like hit record and start like talking but then i just ran forever and you'll like, like you'll hear that video. like right now <laughs> um so devlogs are just one of those things i don't like doing and so if it's something i don't like doing and it doesn't seem necessary to get the game done then i'm i put it off um, and it's it's the that's that one thing like what do I need to do A or B? I'd, I'd rather do A. I'm going to do A. So, um, yeah, uh, but it's it's something that's kind of necessary in order to, like, keep you guys up to date and to I mean, I hate to say it, but like market the game, right? Like it's a good way to like build an audience and, and get you guys aware, make more people aware of the game. So um, it's something that I want to do and I want to find a better format for. And if we can do this Q&A thing where we just sit down and like kind of rant about what we've been working on, then it's kind of like a podcast. Like yeah, it does feel like a podcast. Oh my gosh, we just accidentally invented podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> we anyway, should tell someone. We should. <laughs> anyway, another if... podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just, and their mother's been making podcasts since uh, COVID. Yeah, right. that's true. Yeah, true. But I haven't seen a like a, a game devlog podcasts like this i guess I they probably exist well we can get some feedback in the comments we do read them we do yeah. respond like for people exist yep but yeah so. thank you guys so much for watching um i hope you check out the update on july 22nd when it launches for everyone um it is a free update if you're already on the game uh yeah yeah check it out Woo! enjoy have Woo! fun we've put a lot of work into it and the whole team i, I guess i speak I'm going to speak for the whole team and say we're really proud of it, but we are. If if anyone's not proud yeah. of it, I mean, you can say something. <laughs> but everyone's put a lot of work into it. And yeah. yeah. It shows. We're, uh, it's a pretty safe assumption. We're all pretty proud. Yeah. If yeah. you guys uh, are content creators, if you stream or if you make YouTube videos and you want to cover it, uh, let me or Jana know. And, you mm -hmm. know, we'd love to be there and watch and, and let the community know that, you know, there's someone else covering the game because they like watching it too and they love helping. They love giving tips and, and hints. So yeah, we, we love watching people play and your feedback is invaluable. And watching someone play and like like struggle around something is so important for us because then we can we get like that honest feedback right away and we can implement fixes. So yeah, just let us know. Um, is that it? Should we leave now? Should we say bye? That's it. Yeah, probably. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We need, we and need Abby to here marketer yeah she's really good at it <laughs> yeah bye everyone <laughs> bye bye, bye. <laughs>